As far as the chaos we find ourselves in these days, it's difficult to say which side pulled the trigger first. Arugia deployed an automatic intercept system with drones. Osea implemented long-range attacks to bypass them. So Arugia decided to sabotage Osea's communications and navigation technology. Arugia couldn't launch a satellite themselves, but they were still able to hack the software of the Osean transmission and navigation systems. Before Osea even noticed, half of their satellites were hijacked. That's when things got ugly. In an attempt to knock out each other's capabilities, both forces launched fighters loaded with anti-satellite missiles at the same time. Only military satellites were targeted. However, their destruction created a debris field in orbit which wiped out scores of other satellites, both private and government owned. What kept the world relatively sane up to that point had been free-flowing data and information. But now, those were gone. All that remained was chaos and confusion. Government and civilian broadcasts and transmissions were cut off. The flow of information had ceased. Forces on both sides of the conflict now found themselves unable to communicate with their superiors. Many of the smaller countries annexed by Arugia and yearning for their independence seized the opportunity and started their own uprisings. As for why some of Osea's military decided to break off from the main force and continue on their own, I have no idea. Perhaps there was some sort of dispute over the chain of command. The continent that had once seen wars that were only fought between Osea and Rugia was now full of numerous conflicts between rival leaders vying for power. Insurgencies were everywhere. I even heard a rumor that a group of Osean convicts had rebelled. Rumors. It never ceased to amaze me that even at a crazy time like this, something as trivial as a rumor could find its way here. Communications from corporate were cut off. Apparently, the entire computer network was down. It was a wise decision to make our drones autonomous with AI instead of being radio controlled. Wise and forward thinking. Even with their GPS offline, they can still use their sensors to navigate as long as they're working properly. I'm sure the drones are still working perfectly, following their mission orders to the letter. I wish I could upload Mihai's new data to them, but without a connection, I can't upload the software to the active drones. The new ones we're making though, there should still be enough time to upgrade those before they're activated. I'll be taking the data I've acquired away from the front lines now. Oh, and I'll be taking the girls too. I told my assistant Masa it was time to get Mihai's granddaughters ready to leave here. She's not much older than the girls, but she has a way about her, and I'm sure she won't have any trouble with them. I saw a plane flying off in the distance. I imagine it was looking for a safer place. The plane had a rose emblem on it. Arusia's communication networks have been down since their satellites were destroyed. Unfortunately, we are experiencing trouble too. All of Yuzia has been affected, and we don't know when things will be back up and running. We're not even sure if this is Arusia's doing. Still, we will follow the strategy that was originally planned, and move on to the next operation after liberating Farbanti. Let's get to it! Since the war began, we've been receiving communications in secret from an officer in the Arusian army. With the capital under our control, Arusia's radical element is losing support quickly, affecting the balance of power. HQ is thinking of using the military officer as a way to gain leverage to settle peace negotiations. The officer is currently hiding in the outskirts of Anchorhead Bay, having joined up with support dispatch from the Ocean Army. The plan is that they'll take a standard vehicle to a rendezvous point at a harbor in the east part of the city, where a helicopter will be waiting. 
I would like the new Strider Squadron to provide escort for the officer. Cyclops will remain at the base on standby to serve as defense. With the communication network currently down in the capital, I very much doubt Arusia will be able to mount a regimented counterattack. However, it is likely that Arusia's intelligence department and the remaining forces who are aware of the officer's movements will interfere. Keep a close eye on the officer and make sure he stays safe. Our victory in Farbanti has given us a golden opportunity to finally end this war. Be safe out there. Take note that our satellite-based IFF has become unreliable following the recent communications failure. As such, target ID will be done by processing the images from the infrared cameras on your aircraft. Objects will initially appear as unknown on your HUDs, but will be ID'd once you close in on them for a set period of time. Strider Squadron, you're cleared to taxi. To the unidentified Ocean craft, this is Captain Carl of the Ocean Army. Are you here for the escort? You're not the squadron I was expecting. Are you really friendlies? Over. This is Longcaster. Airborne warning and control system for the Ocean Long Range Strategic Strike Group. Captain Carl, they're on our side. And those two pilots we've heard about must be here too. Okay, I hope you're right. Longcaster, are all of these really unknowns? It's a state of civil war. The Erujian army is fighting itself. There's no guarantee the Oceans won't shoot us in this confusion. We'll image process the unknowns caught in your camps to identify friend or foe. The process will be faster if you get a close-up, well-centered image. Meanwhile, we just run if they shoot us, right? Affirmative. Always identify your target before you fire. War is something I'll never get used to, but tonight has been a total shock. The city under martial law. Gunfire and the roar of jets echoing through the streets. Give me Strider Squadron's IDs. Oh. And, uh, hand me that sandwich. ID is Ocean Forces. This is AWACS for the LRSSG. Our info has been updated. Terminal. 
one, don't ice up. We're almost at landfill number seven. If we can make it through, we'll be in arm's reach of the rendezvous at Grunder Park. Captain Carl, do you have the means to record this conversation? I wish to explain to you the situation inside Erugia. I'm sure the boys listening upstairs will record it. <gasps> the open declaration of war, expanding the front lines, was all the work of some young Erugian officers. They were referred to as the Radicals, but there was an unseen force guiding them. It was technology they borrowed from the Belkins. When they actually went to war, the performance of the attack drones exceeded their wildest dreams. And they were incredibly clean, which got public opinion and the opportunists within the military on their side. They even manipulated the Princess. The Belkin technology advanced UAV research within the Illusion Flight Test Center by at least 10 years. They used the flight data from a former ace pilot to create drone AI, but... To us, it's no different than magic or alchemy. Airplanes are meant to be flown by human beings. For those of you listening in, am I wrong? We're heading towards Grunder Park. Rendezvous point is a helipad on this man-made island. We'll ditch the car and take the helicopter from there. Delta Lima. 
The rescue team says hostiles are making the area too dangerous. Well, yeah, don't be no nowhere safe. Our capital's fall has led to another power struggle within the Erosion military. It's all gone to hell. Even radio chatters about the Civil War. Radio? You have one in your cockpit? Yeah, ever since my previous squadron. I've got it taped, nice and secure. We're about to cross Anchor Bridge. There'll be nowhere to hide. That was something. Seeing forces at landfill number seven. This is a wax long caster. That vehicle is one of ours! Point. The 
Coordinates are up ahead. Take out any enemies in the surrounding area. You were so busy vocally. You may be, you forgot to develop a real violence. Officers from countries annexed by Arusha have taken multiple groups and declared independence. Don't worry, we won't let anybody through after you. Almost at the rendezvous. Hustle, with the rear of the others. Oh. Understood. The radicals truly believe most of drone productions will make up for losses. They should be taking responsibility for the capital's fall, but instead they're prolonging the war. That is why proper conservatives like myself are moving to regain control. If all goes well, you should be able to sign a truce with Osea quickly. We've reached the rendezvous point. There's the chopper too. Hour. We need a beacon of light to show us the way. This is the Erosion News Network. Okay, let's go. We're getting out of here. I've had just about enough of this place. I'd like to offer my thanks to the LRSSG. They should finally bring about a true end to the war. Understood. Good luck. Multiple unidentified aircraft approaching. This plane is carrying civilians. We have escort fighters, but we do not intend to engage in combat. Please stand down. What's going on? Try to get a little closer. Weapon use is prohibited. What's going on? Dr. Schroeder! Whoa, whoa. There's a girl on board? He's not lying about carrying civilians. No, unless she's a soldier. We've checked footage. It does seem to be a transport with escorts. I repeat, this craft is carrying civilians. We are not here to fight. Dr. Schroeder, tell me what's happening. I'm sure I don't need to remind you. But do not attack the civilian liaison. That's the aircraft your grandfather told me about. The one the scratches. There it is. The EASA liaison plane. They engage in witchcraft with Belkin technology. They're responsible for leading the military down the wrong path. <laughs> Wait. Unknown's attacking the girl's plane. Bomber, hold on tight. Longcaster, permission to engage. Negative. What? They could be Ocean fighters. ID them ASAP. ID complete. They're Russian fighters. What the hell is going on? Stay sharp. Uh-huh. Right. I'm shooting them down. Any complaints? Granted. Wilco. 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 Yeah, good work. Straighter one is killed a bandit. You got 
gotta be kidding me. Liaison escort has a radar lock. They're targeting you guys. What the hell? We were just helping them. Erusion aircraft, this is AWACS Longcaster. Do not engage the liaison. Break off now. Can you hear me on this channel, Ocean Craft? Those escort aircraft are drones. They are currently being operated autonomously. They are not being controlled by anyone. They are flying on their own volition. What? In that case, we have no choice but to shoot the aircraft down. Unfortunately, yes. We did what we could. Weapons free. You are cleared to attack the escort. Welcome. Understood. Missile. Welcome. Missile. Hey, it's not our fault that we'll listen to reason. Why build something like that? Whoever did is the king of all dumbasses. Missile inbound. Drinking. Missile. 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 Target acquired. Hostile confirmed destroyed. Box two. has a lock on you. Tell my boy. Understood. All hostiles have been eliminated. Nice. The General's helicopter is flying safely outside Anchorhead Bay. All aircraft, RTB, mission complete. All hostiles, huh?
In order to respond to the attack on the base, Cyclops has scrambled after being on standby. We'll head up too, once our planes are ready. Oh, and Labarth is dead. What did you say? Apparently, he was shot down by another Ocean aircraft after he left the area of operations. I mean, I know it was chaos, but still. At any rate, the sealed order operation has come to a close. We have no idea about a plan for going forward. All we can do for now is watch our own backs. What's up with the commander? He's staying in his room. He's still alive, since we can hear him crying. 